But hello, everybody, and welcome to the 19th episode of the HSBG podcast. I'm your host, Educator Collins, and I'm here with my constant co-host, Shady Bunny. How are you doing? Doing great. Excited for today. How are you, Collins? I'm doing pretty well. You know, I'm always tired, especially when we get to doing these at the end. I'm like, oh, my God, that was a lot of work. You know, it must be nice. <laughs> but... Uh, doing well, and uh, we're here with our special guest, Nicolina. How are you doing special. as well? Oh, I'm Very great. Special. I'm pretty tired, so apologies in advance if I say something like dumb or I'm slow-brained today, but I've been awake for a while trying to fix my sleep schedule. Yeah, I've, I'm always amazed at your, at your schedule. Every time I tune in, I'm like, how, how does she do it? How is she still awake? <laughs> you know? I barely... <laughs> It, barely do it it's it's very fascinating to me, but glad to have you on yeah. here it's always great to have um very skilled players and things like that in uh Thank in you. our conversation uh we always start off with our um weekly overview just kind of discussing uh how things have gone this week anything interesting anything unique just like meta shows or things like that so uh, if you want to start it off nicolina oh uh weekly news um no, nah, just like Shoot, uh, can, how is your how's your games been? Yeah, this oh week. my games. I mean, I, I can go first if you like. It's just like a feel for <laughs> no, oh yeah, no. like this week. Oh, I've been doing this and it's been working great, and I've been gaining points. So like oh, oh you know, okay, I'm losing to this or yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Um. Well, I had such a hectic life, real life month last month that I didn't play at all. So I basically, yeah, I probably played like a total of fifteen games the entire month. And then I came back totally not feeling like I knew what was going on at all. Um, and it was like shortly after the nerfs or buffs or whatever happened, all the some heroes got brought back. And right. um, so, you know, it's been not ideal. <laughs> I just had a game just now, right now, before this, where I took 30 damage on turn eight to trade Prince Gallywix. I wasn't even really weak pretty good was it like a prize game fun. or did they have like a I... boat or something stupid they had, uh, somehow had double light fairing and uh some other stuff i don't know i mean they had a whole bunch of extra gold because uh, that's the hero power now right. so i guess they had just been leveling way ahead of curve and yeah i just happened to hit a bad moment there and my my trades my break points were ended up not being good and I left a lot everything alive with one or two health. <laughs> they had a huge taunt, I think was part of the problem. It had like um like um sixty health or something on this taunt and I couldn't get to the light fangs and I died. <laughs> and so that, that, it's that's a killer setup for sure with the fangs <laughs> behind a big ass taunt. I also uh, the same thing happened. I think I posted a clip on Twitter like two days ago. I saw uh, that. Not one. the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and no joke. That happened to me legit again two games later. But it was with a wildfire Ely, a gold wildfire Ely, um, the second time. <laughs> Those are the rough games yeah. where you're just so it's been everything. yeah it's been like that. Yeah. That's basically how it's been. It's been like that. <laughs> uh, my games have not been that extreme. I would say in general. Uh, I, nice. I, the mm -hmm. only like uh real confusion like stuff is whenever prizes are in. I think I said this last week, right? But anytime prizes are in, I just, I'm not sure exactly how strong everyone will be. And yeah, in my in my own games, I've had games where I'm like, this is not reasonable as a board state, you know? Like I, have <laughs> you seen it, Jay? <laughs> where I'm just like, this is not balanced in like this setup there's no way you can deal with it you know things like that and sometimes my opponent has it sometimes i have it so um in 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 those games but just generally my games have been all right just kind of um still kind of doing my same play style i'm pretty stubborn and like i'm not i'm not like changing uh well i mean i i am adapting but like i still like you know being somewhat risky in my plays you know sometimes it doesn't work out but mm -hmm. it it's been all, all right so far. How about you, Shady? So today I'm minus 500, but a lot of just like Sounds stupid good. games and non-games where, you know, you just take a bunch of damage or just 
you just see these hits and you're like, could it have been any worse? Oh my god. But, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, right. all day. Today, just like, also, today and yesterday yeah. were so bad. I wound up like 150 ranks positive over six hours. And I'm like, okay, at least I went positive, but it just so slow. It feels so like so grindy. Yeah, I mean, it could be it could be bad. Like for for the most part, like I'm having a I'm having a lot of fun still, and I. I, I think that I'm I'm learning and I'm getting better. It's just like this, like sometimes you just have these top eight games and then these really hard fouled games. You need like three or four of them to make up for that top eight. Right. But I, I would say the main thing that I've experienced uh, maybe the last two weeks or so is that I have this feeling sometimes where I'm like, oh, you know, like that would be too strong where you're like, ah, oh, that's like a gold inefficient line. I don't really want to do that. And the more you play right with these really uh, other strong opponents and these just maybe meta shifts where, you know, especially with prizes and where anything can happen, it's been so often that I've been leaning more to the, I can't be too strong. <laughs> you know, so I'm just going to do it. And I'm taking the upside of, you know, yeah. let's say I'm a little bit too strong and I kill the guy. Cool. There we go. He's out of the game. That's fine. Right. So it's, uh, you know, because my opponent can have the exact same mindset where they say okay let's just you know be really strong and if you randomly hit a person that went all in that turn um you know you could take 25 or more so that that's i guess the thing this week that's been good for me it's just realizing oh cool here you know like randomly today i put like a junk belt as a finisher on my turn because it worked well with the gold and normally i would never do that but i had a couple mechs next turn i bought a menace and you know three turns later this junk belt still on my board because it's, it's actually kind of okay you know <laughs> but it would have never hit the board had i not thought like okay what's the strongest play this turn and i've been going with that a lot more and that feels good instead of just chasing this comp that i have in my head where i'm like oh this this minion doesn't belong in that comp so i'm not gonna buy it and, and that's been good for me yeah sounds like a great strategy if you want to not be last you know yeah, buying minions <laughs> <laughs> that keep you alive i know revolutionary but it works sometimes uh moving now we'll get to our next topic uh the uh there's been patch notes right so patch eight 20.8.2 is live and the big change is that um they've they've adjusted the prizes so before they said they were going to do it but they, they hadn't done it now they've actually done it where if you are lower in the leaderboard so if you're like bottom four if no one's died you're going to get better prizes and that's that's live today theoretically so i just wanted to know what what are your thoughts on these changes we talked about it a little bit last week but we hadn't ha heard from you what do you think about it yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, so I actually, I'm not sure which prizes, you know, are allocated oh, right. to uh, top or bottom four. I, I can't remember. Do I remember they off the top of it? my head? Did they post that? Or... Got the, uh, the double attack one is in the bottom bracket. You can't get down. Double battle cry. You can't cry get that if you're bottom? Yeah, well, that's, that, that was be, I, I don't know if that's, you know, it's always so confusing, right? Like, is it live? Is it yeah. not live? Is it working this time? Is right. it not working this time? But if we're going off the information, I believe they said that you can't get double battle cry. You can't get actually the double attack is still in, is it not, Collins? I think we said that yeah, we shouldn't double be able attack to get that is still in, but yeah, they somehow think be. that's a good prize. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they think that doubling attack is a great prize. They, so, was that put in the original like um, announcement where they said prizes were back? uh i don't think they said which one i think they just said you get better prizes it, it wasn't the right. initial it was announcement but then they changed it like later on they put it in are you are you sure no, did we not yeah, but i'm it? saying like yeah. you know the I, specific um prizes like like i know i guess i can just look in the other place right i suppose i could no, it's fair, but I mean, we have this stuff in Arena all the time where they said we have we have adjusted offering rates. Period. <laughs> They're just like, okay, thank you. That's a lot of information. So yeah, they initially didn't even say which prizes were better. They just said better prizes will be offered. Um, what but, I think. Yeah. Oh, I found it. Okay, so the bottom tier prizes that won't be offered to you if you're in the bottom half: big banana, new recruit. Uh, new recruit is which add a minion to the tavern. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, and then 
great deal gruel rules wait what's great deal oh um downgrade the cost of the tavern right yeah Grand's blessing trash. double battle cry is unlimited coin repeat customer oh that's put a minion back to your hand and all the glitters is make a minion in the store gold right that's like a yeah. pretty good one isn't that a good prize <laughs> I, I, I think their logic is where if you're behind, you don't really get to like take that. Where where a lot of the time, I feel like you buy this one and then you hold it for when you roll specifically the minion you want, and you can like buy out the shop and stuff like that. So hey, you can get like a six drop usually, though. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I I don't know. I think their logic is not sound right when it comes to the <laughs> prizes. So I'm I'm with you. I mean, where I would much rather you know randomly get the golden minion than doubling it. Yeah, yeah, I get that one all the time. But I was gonna say that. Okay, so what do I think? I think that the first prize is really kind of arbitrary. Who's in the bottom four on turn four? Right. Okay. Like, I feel like um, it doesn't really matter. And some heroes like Jandis might be in the bottom four that are gonna be a strong hero in a couple turns like two to three turns and then they're gonna get a good price i don't know that might not work out but i do like it for the second two price turns okay i i think that's a a fair point right we talked about it last turn in that um some some heroes like hyper level right and then this is gonna <laughs> kind of reward uh yeah. the people that are hyper leveling and and that they're gonna level to try to get the good prize and then they, because they're gonna be lower health they're gonna have a higher chance of hitting the good prize right so it makes the um like going to five a more viable strategy right and like yeah. do we like that I as think a, i'm fine with it okay personally. i think it's like i mean you still might not get the prize you want True. and you might take too much damage and there's still like a lot of risks and the prize might not be enough to make the difference if you already took a bunch of damage i feel like taking damage on purpose is usually not a good strategy either way but what do you guys think uh it's definitely a risk here but you know i'm already doing this <laughs> to be fair like, yeah. I'm, right. I'm already so, hyper leveling so it just makes yeah. my strat easier for me uh, I don't know if yeah, so I don't think it matters too much. What about you, Shady? Yeah, the, the argument I had was that it's not necessarily taking damage on purpose, it's hyper leveling. And that's something we already see with, yeah. say, a ghost in the lobby, when there is a clear advantage to just saying, all right, screw whatever, I'm just leveling and I'll just catch mm -hmm. back up later if I get a free turn versus the ghost. Where this is not as extreme as getting a free turn, but still, you are encouraged to go for these you know go all out go crazy and just make it work kind of lines and especially because there's some heroes like omu that you know they'll be in the bottom four but it'll be very manageable and they'll be very uh strong two turns from the prize turn or maybe even one turn later i feel like it's not great i think that it's really bad for tempo heroes who are already struggling in those prize lobbies because it feels like tempo heroes don't belong that well in prize lobbies because they they're not that ambitious you know let's say you're playing a rock niche or a kale and you're just buffing your shield um you don't benefit as much from the prizes as say something like a Jandis or an omu or a hook does because just gonna have a very easy time reaching tiers tier six potentially so that would be my main argument where i don't really like that you know we're making those heroes even better because they get to do the level thing a lot easier mm. but on the other hand um the bottom prizes then are going to be the the better ones, which I guess are the spikier ones, mm -hmm. which you know do align with spikier heroes. But by the other side of the coin, wouldn't the remaining prizes for the top four be the more tempo oriented prizes, like giving plus five plus five to a minion? And if you are a tempo hero, would you not rather have that than, for example, maybe you're not ready to level to five because you're a tempo hero, so you don't want like uh, the discovery minion from your tier? maybe you want one of the tempo prizes instead and that fits better with your like strategy that i think is perfectly fair to say but as i said maybe. i think that you don't really even want to play those tempo heroes so i feel like whenever yeah. you know let's say i am you playing to, <laughs> right yeah let's say i am playing a kale and i am in a prize lobby it feels like i'm still 
like I have to do better than just sitting on tier four. So I'm still trying for it. But I think it's a good argument. I think it's perfectly fine to say, you know, if you are a tempo hero and you do preserve health, you're going to get prizes that your kind of hero likes more on average. Although, you know, like gaining plus five plus five on something is still <laughs> fairly sad compared to discovering a minion from your tier. But. I remember playing arm comp and I was like, plus five, plus five and taunt. On my <laughs> yeah, I know that's good. That's you get a bronze ward on this dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but other than that, I was like, yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, I could see that. I'm, I'm surprised that they are moving Gruel. You know, I'd love to have Gruel. You know, if I'm like a, a tempo hero, I just put on a shield or something or a cleave, and I'm like, okay, I get plus two plus two a turn. You know, that yeah. one I, I don't know uh, being removed. But other than that, it's. I feel like I never take that because I'm just so cognizant of the fact that I could just die I, next turn. I <laughs> like agree. I, so I, I'm I, like, I'm not gonna have time. <laughs> I also have not taken it. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I, I, see, this is the thing where I, I tend to take Gruel a decent amount of the time because, you know, even though I don't want to play the Tempo Heroes, who are we kidding? I'm still gonna be playing Tempo Heroes, right? Sometimes in a prize lobby, and you're like, ah, oh, whatever, on the deflect though it goes. Because I have the opposite feeling where I feel like I'm not going to be dead the next turn because I am still on four. Uh, yeah. I, 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 like I your argument, that but... feeling a couple times and then I died from 30. I'm already on tier six by that point. So I'm just yeah. like, just what's, just yeah. Blazing past it. <laughs> what's it's, doing I'm sort of struggling with like, I mean, I just feel like since I've, I've only played like full three days of, of right. streams really. But in those three days, I felt like it just seemed like even if I wasn't in a particularly good spot, if I didn't level on the turn with everyone else, that I was just gonna get steamrolled like very soon. You know what I mean? So like a lot of times, even if I have 14 health, I will just level to five because I feel like if I don't, I'm gonna die anyway. Yeah, the, the issue with staying uh -huh. on four is that there's only a couple of specific compositions that do well and like encounter the people who are leveling to five, right? So if you're staying on four, uh, it's usually some form of taunt comp, maybe some form of harbinger comp, or maybe if you get really lucky, you have like double deflecto mechs, right? Those are like the three or so. I'm sure Shady has more. Like Shady will add in like Earth Shaker comp, you know, da da da, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Ground and shaker. So yeah, ground like... shaker, and, and um, those are really like the ones that can contest with the people that are, that level the five and hit a spike. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if you're not running like those like specific hyper. Um, scaling comps on four, you kind of fizzle out. So um, it, it can be tough like, unless you get those pieces early and then you know exactly, oh, I got an arm, I got a, I got a, a mech taunt, da da da, I can commit to this. You know, I got a champion with that. Okay, we're strong. Right. If you're not getting those pieces and you, you try to force it and you're too late, like a turn late, you can just like get blown out at a, at a, immediately so you do have to be careful i don't know why i'm talking when shady will give a much better like explanation here, but... <laughs> no it's, it's all good i mean <laughs> i don't have to go over everything you play on tier four again but now it, it, it just comes down to knowing what to look for right and, and also just seeing which minion types are in and and your hero is also a huge deal like when i'm playing alec here for instance i'm going to be really leaning towards trying to get shaker because alec here shaker comp if you get one cleave it's stupid broken right and you'll yeah, have to tear up yeah. for that yeah that's like so <laughs> Sorry, not too, yeah. no all good like jump in at any time right i'm enthusiastic from tier four that's what we want to see here right like no, yeah no, cleave shaker uh, <laughs> too much. dude no but i feel like i wish they would just remove cleave whoa it's such a stupid mechanic and the fact that there's only three minions that can do it and it's like so oh. strong and especially alakir it's just problematic i guess i'm scarred from from that you, game but you do I have just feel like it's silly. Sure. absolutely and and cleave counters taunt comp so i could totally see that right down with it the just cleave. destroys every comp it's just like <laughs> boom your board's gone cleave is how I'm i win here. games boom boom board's gone it's, it's gone <laughs> it, it just yeah it, it needs that versus alec like you just need that divine shield taunt at the end to soak both charges and like a selfless and something else right you just need to devote the entire right side of your board to handling that one minion yeah i mean you know that you don't get the perfect shit to counter every person every game, right? oh absolutely like, and, and, and you did yeah like 
<laughs> oh man. I don't like really it. Really a mid-game spike thing. That's really I never it. liked cleaves, sure. but I just feel it's really bad right now. That is an interesting uh analysis. I've never thought about removing cleave and how that would fundamentally change the game here. Cause I'm it would definitely make it more uh fun. I'm definitely a cleave abuser. <laughs> You know, I'm maybe not your friend in that aspect where you're like, I oh. use it too when I can, yeah. yeah. I mean, because you, why wouldn't you? But yeah. I just feel like it's pretty limiting in terms of comps that can be made. Like, it's kind of annoying that you have to have a taunt and you have to put it on the end. You have to put something crappy next to it. That's like really limits um, what you can do. That's true, and with Alec here as well in, in the pool, right? That really allows for yeah. a lot of uh, BS situations yeah. where I'm just like, yeah, this yeah. guy had an Alec here, the Cleo, I guess I lose. There goes like six minions. Yeah. I've had that happen to me where it's just like, oh. Yeah. Not, not Watch the clip cool. on my Twitter. It's exactly what, I'm, <laughs> that exactly what happened. I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> Because and it happens so soon now with the prizes, because you know they can. I think the person in the, in the clip got like you know the level up all the minions, evolve all the minions in your tavern. Evolving tavern, yeah. They, so they got it like super super early, um, and it just I wasn't thinking about that or expecting that in any way. Uh, so I think it's definitely problematic with Alec here, at least. Yeah. And the prizes. That is something true about uh, cleave. Sometimes, even if you know your opponent has cleave, sometimes there's not like a way to deal with it properly. Yeah. Right. Where it's you like, like, hope I go first. And even <laughs> then, like it. Yeah. It, it's not guaranteed, especially if they have like the divine shield. Uh, or multiple cleave. Bombs. Yeah, or something like Don't that. Don't hit the right one. <laughs> Yeah, the Divine Shield mech cleave, they go first and they can, you know, just kill all six minions, yeah. Like, just kill six minions right away. Uh, I have a lot of games where I have, like, triple cleave. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. two, two mech cleaves and a hydra cleave. And especially well. with it being the best thing in the game, right now everybody's obviously trying to get it. So that also makes it hard. If you're a hero that's a bit slower, too. So... I don't think it's something they're going to do, right? Um, they did um, talk about readjusting some minions, right? Like, they said they were um, changing some of the minions, trying to keep the core type, right? Uh, almost 35 minions, they said they were changing, yeah. right? So I, I I would be surprised if they don't um, do something cleave. about it. Yeah. yeah. Just, like, add more cleave. I was like, yeah, we saw oh, you no. guys lacking cleave. Here's some more cleave. No. Cleave for every, every minion type. Right. Like, cleave on tier one. <laughs> cleave on tier two. <laughs> I've thought about and it a certainly tier makes one the cleave. games faster. I, I have thought about a tier one cleave and how you could like some heroes, right? That have buff abilities, they're just like, oh tier one cleave? I just buy this, let's yeah, go. And Edwin, <laughs> Edwin just pops up immediately. <laughs> Turn one, baby. Let's go. That, 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 that is interesting to see. I, I feel that like it's silly. such a I feel like it's such a flavorful thing that when they rework the minions, it feels like Hydra will still be in, but I have no idea, of course, right? That's just a flavor feeling. Because I, I think your take mm -hmm. is interesting and, and valid, absolutely. Um, especially when you see Alec here, right? Using cleaves. Yeah. I feel like for the most part, <laughs> apart from me just memeing and saying, cleave is cheat, stop cleaving all my Tom minions at the same time. I don't think there's that many people that are looking at this, but it could be, you know, part of the frustration that comes with these games, but they don't Maybe necessarily really identify so it. it. Yeah, they don't necessarily see it anymore because it's, uh, you know, so exposed yeah. to it, like you said. So, yeah. So I think I, since it's been in the game since the start, I just sure. think maybe that's why they might change it up. Um, it would just be, in, like, fun to have a meta where you just didn't have to worry about that. Like, I love games that just they're, those types are out. Beasts Mechs and Mechs. And, beasts and you still have gone. Wildfire Ely, yeah. but it's not nearly, obviously, um, as big of a deal. Uh, especially when the fits on yeah. Golden. But I, I freaking love games with no Mechs and Beasts. Do you identify that feeling of relief? <laughs> like, oh, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> it is really so good. It feels <laughs> so good. True. Huh. And I have the opposite feeling. I'm like, huh, I, I can't cleave. cleave. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, the, the go in my cleave. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. hilarious. Because I'm probably the one cleaving people instead of getting cleave. Obviously, I get cleaves from time to time, right? But I have way more experience of being the one doing the cleave. 
<laughs> it's like the, the the thing with removing cleave though do we open the door to like divine shield poison being like even stronger right where we don't there's have like the barely any of those movie. minions though right? sorry I think there's there's very few. I don't know. There's one I minion, there's... and it's the only one that matters. Well, yeah, I'm I'm more referring to people like the meta right now is like you you end on a selfless and poisons and a baron and or you play a Malgadons or you like your George or whatnot. Um, so it feels like, especially like let's say I'm playing Beast, right? Like Beast effectively get killed off if Cleave isn't there, because that's kind of the only thing Beast mm -hmm. has going for it is you get a big. Hydra, and then you get to cleave multiple things. Um, it's so sad that when you you play Beast Comp, and then they have like just Poison Spore, just trading one for one with your giant beast because you can't cleave extra minions. That's true. It would mess up like Beast composition. But they're gonna revamp everything anyway, right? So Beast Comp probably <laughs> looks completely different. You know, hopefully it looks completely different. Not as fifty fifty. Please let me go first. Let my call do something yeah. reliant. All right. Yeah, yeah, on a side, I know we should move on. On a side note, no, I, I, am, good, I am very excited to see how they change all the minions. Because uh, we've had a lot of these minions, uh, like, archetypes for a long time, right? And seeing how they switch them up, right? Like, having a mech comp be look completely different than what we have now. Having dragons be completely different than what we have now. I don't... I can't even imagine it right now, right? How would you change, keep the dragon theme, but still have have it not be like, okay, level six, do you get two Caligos? Oh, I guess that is, you won or not. Like, how will they add to some form of dragons, right? Because they're not changing every single card, which that would be too much work, right? But they're keeping some cards, right? But they're changing the theme. And how do you do that? You know, I'd love Ooh, to know. Me. Okay. <laughs> I actually have an idea this, for this the other day, like, okay. and it's related to Ysera. And I think it would be cool. This is kind of half baked, <laughs> so if, I'm sure you'll find holes in it. But I would, I think it would be cool to to have the hand interact more with the game. So like right now, it's sure you can hold cards in your hand, but they're just minions, right? There's no spells for the most part. I mean, there's gems now well, and gems there's prizes, guess, yeah. sure, I guess. But like, you don't have strategic plays from hand that you can use on a certain turn trap cards. so like yeah okay. basically trap cards <laughs> but anyways what gave me that thought was thinking about dragons and thinking about why doesn't your sarah have a card um and i feel like they could use some of the dream cards from your sarah such as like uh you you get your sarah and it's like a five two five or six minion and at the end of your every turn you get one of the random spells and the spells are like even um you know, nightmare plus ten plus ten this turn, and then this minion is gone. Like this minion is destroyed for your next turn. Or um, dream return a minion to your opponent's hand. So maybe it would just, you know, um, at the start of the fight, <laughs> you see the hydra, the hydra and you target the hydra. <laughs> You're like, get back I there. I didn't, I didn't fully flesh out every card, yeah. but uh, <laughs> or it could give you, uh, you know, the the seven six dragon. I think is one of them. I'm sure they could come up with something alternative yeah, no, to that, sure. but so a bit like Mirazont esque, but way more like fun, flavorful. Where you know, yeah, not around. just give yeah. you strictly minions, but give you like one time use spells that you could use whenever. Um, and then you could be a bit more strategic. Like I know my opponent has this, so I'm gonna play this spell that I have at this point. And um, yeah, I think that would be interesting. It could work. Would not be too surprised indeed to see something similar to that if we are doing a big rework. Because yeah, Yasera has been pretty much in the game since forever. So are they changing heroes? Do you... No, I mean the constructed Yasera card, the four twelve that gives you random stuff. Dream of removing your own yeah, minion. Yeah, draft or a dream could just be like pick up your own minion. So kind of like the prize that oh, picks okay. up your minion. Yeah, that actually I was like, I know I thought about this and that that, that would be OP and thought of a different but you could just pick up your own minion, um, for example. But also shoot, it would be cool also to bring in some of the other classes' secrets. So my Yev could yes, uh, maybe a minion that discovers a rogue secret or discovers a secret of your class type or something like that. True. Whatever class your that, hero is from. 
they've opened up secrets and then have not like explored it at all right yeah. like secrets have been in the right. game since the beginning right it's mm -hmm. it's viably there like for forever mm -hmm. But they haven't they haven't really touched it they're like ice block yes that is a genius one yeah. and then they was <laughs> yeah. like the rest of it i don't care you know they put competitive spirit as well which you know sure that yeah. helped him as well but they really haven't touched uh secret strategies and how you you utilize that in your game plan and i think that is that is something to explore as well that's a, that sounds yeah. fun uh, now will they do it maybe healing <laughs> I, um... <laughs> I've been so scared of healing, adding healing to the mm -hmm. game. Though I'm actually, the healing is not, it's the damage. I don't think they'll do it. The damage is the problem, not the healing. Yeah, if the damage was more uh, balanced, I guess, then the healing wouldn't affect me as much. But I just feel like we, as players, would abuse any healing mechanic we were given. You know, like. I don't think they'll do it because it'll make games longer. I don't think they want that. Yeah, they they don't seem to like making longer games. That's definitely true. But sometimes you can't help it, especially with the prize meta. Like I remember when prizes are in games were like almost twice as long sometimes because of all the ice blocks people are get, getting and things like that. Especially when you could hit multiple ice blocks uh, in a pr single prize game. I remember hitting ice block and then hitting ice block again, uh, the following mm -hmm. prize uh, thing. And I was playing. Uh, Eight golems I, would be cool. I, I Sorry, was playing Akazamzarek as well, so I had. I had three three ice blocks that game, you know, and mm -hmm. I I won. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, this is a, this is a reasonable, but uh, would be it would be fascinating to uh to see what they have. Anyways, we've really discussed this to death. <laughs> Not that I was expecting that. Uh, moving on to the next topic, uh, tournaments, just tournament play and things like that. I know. You were in the recent Salami tournament, and I just wanted to talk with you about your experience and how you enjoyed tournaments and just tournaments in general and things like that going on. Um. Well, yeah, that was, I was, I think I made top eight or something. I ended up getting like fifth or sixth but overall, but I was like really surprised that I even made it past the first <laughs> elimination round because I, that was like right after I moved, I think, and I hadn't even played any games yet. So I was like, oh boy. Uh, so I really did just play for top four because um, I wanted to knock it last every game. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had pretty mediocre heroes, like not, not, a, not a tier one hero and pretty mediocre luck and scraped enough points to make it to top eight where I proceeded to get some more mediocre heroes. <laughs> but um. I, I like tournaments. I do. I think that it's really sort of difficult, though, to to have a tournament that gets an accurate result in terms of player skill because of the high level of variance in the games and the amount of time it would take to play enough games. Uh, it would be in like probably a two day type event with you know many rounds to kind of feel fair. <laughs> I feel like I after having the experience of getting fifth and the the battle of the boars, I, I'd, get fit, I'd get fifth every game pretty much and then end up with no points. And it just, I felt like after that, I was just like, it's kind of a crapshoot what happens in the tournament. So you can't really be upset about it. I don't think. Uh, uh, yeah, so. so. In terms of like suggestions to how to make tournaments fair, because I do agree with you in that um, it's not, tournaments aren't necessarily a fair endeavor when you go in. Uh, especially with um, how they're structured at the moment, since um, they need to be like relatively quick, right? You can't have people from all across the world like playing, you know, yeah, five six hours at a time, right? Because you know it's gonna it's gonna hit midnight for somebody, especially, right? How do you make it fair? Do you, is it just like more games? Is it like a a better tournament structure, like points? How points are distributed? Is is it like? Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think would be particularly like the most effective for having the most fair tournaments? And Che, you can hop in as well if you like. Well, just just from uh, the background I have playing uh, like paper card mm -hmm. games and just watching the uh, master tours or whatever they're called for constructed, that would be so cool. Where you just have this, you know, you get there in the morning and you just start, and it's just like huge 
player pool and you play your lobby. And then I, I'm not sure if exactly you'd be playing more than one lobby with the same people, but you just have lobby after lobby after lobby. Yeah. And it's a lot of rounds, right? Those days are grueling. But at the end, you know, like eight, nine, ten hours deep into the tournament, if you're doing well, and then you just have your day one, and then it's the day two cutoff where you see, okay, this amount of people have scored this many points, they advance to day two, and then, you know, you either have a reset or points carry over, whichever one makes more sense. And then you have your top eight in the end, right? And it's so much high for like, all right, these players battled through day one, day two, these eight players have the most amount of points at the end, and they're going to duke it out, right? And it's like, I don't know, five or right. six or however many round lobbies maybe, you know, but it, that is probably a logistical nightmare, right? We can sit here and fantasize about it, like, ah, make it happen. All right, that'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, you need, ugh, man, and then you need to, I don't know, maybe even have like, uh, I don't know, tournament officials making sure there's no like backseating people like saying oh buy this one blah, blah blah you know like as you would in normal like tournaments where you know you can't get any third party help etc but yeah i mean ideally that that's what i would love that'd be amazing i agree 100 percent. i think that's the only way that you could make it like actually competitive and i think that and i also played paper card games and i've played tournaments that were 12 hours plus right. like, um regularly and I think Hearthstone players are very, very spoiled. Um, <laughs> not wanting a tournament to last more than four or five hours is a little bit like, mm. hmm. But um, I think I think if you don't do it that way, um, you just have to accept that there's a high amount of variance. The best players aren't necessarily going to make it to the finals. And um, it's just the way it is. Yeah, it seems you guys have uh, that paper experience, you know, I'm a little left out in here where I'm like, oh, it sounds fun. You know, I never tried it, but it sounds, sounds It's great. not fun. I quit. I quit going to this. It's awful. It's truly okay, horrible. Maybe not. Never mind. <laughs> no, it, I don't recommend it. It sounds fun in my head, I guess. So I have good memories about it, but I do have to say once you get spoiled by Hearthstone where you're like, oh, I could just sit down and queue and straight away. Oh my gosh, yeah. Wait, there's no in between rounds. And I just and... go up and turn my match slip in and like have my yeah. opponent sign it and go find this my guy isn't gonna and, give like, me it's telling me that he won and he's like oh my gosh. He's bitching yeah. about my sleeves, telling me to mark this. Oh, like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, my God. But th that's the dark side, Collins, where yeah, you get opponents that are just so petty and they're just like, oh, it's your, your little sleeve has a little mark on it, and you definitely yeah. know that's a specific card, and you're cheated, yeah. and I want my I win. I want an extra win. card. All right, yeah, I want to so. drop the card on the floor. All right. Like, the, the automatic. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're stalling. That's a huge thing. Stalling. You can't do that here. Sure, no, you can no, roll. No, no. Oh, yeah, Nicolina and I are just going to start complaining about oh paper. <laughs> you can't do unnecessary actions. If the action doesn't advance the state, it doesn't advance the game, you're stalling. Okay. <laughs> so buying and selling minions unnecessarily, you're stalling. I, I have been thoroughly convinced. Maybe it would not be as fun as it had in my head. Okay. Like right now, you're spoiled. But I mean, I do have good memories. Of, I, I think the best part is you go there with friends. And in between the rounds, yeah. you have this check, right? Like, hey, you got the win. I, we all got the win. We all got the loss. Ah, oh, this guy's not doing too well. Or, and then you have to listen to people's entire replay of their games. And yeah, like, oh, this guy is cool. This so lucky. And then you topic this, and I. <laughs> but, um, but at least. However, yeah. LAN Hearthstone tournaments were never as bad as paper TCGs. Like, I've been to both. And uh, LAN Hearthstone tournaments never take quite as long. But, you know, another thing, JD, um, when the pairings, repairings, uh, repairs, and you have to wait, you know, like two hours in between rounds. Um, oh, wow. Does that ever happen? To, like, I don't think I've ever had two, two hours. I think, That's I think I've had to wait five hours between a round at one point. Okay. Legit. Yeah. That's never, tournament. never. So I, I, so I played mainly. I've been to Euro. like a thousand oh. players. Okay, yeah. those, those are those are huge. I've I've done. I think the biggest I've done was five hundred ish. Uh, that was the European Championship. But yeah, I don't think I've ever done. I I would love to have done that, but I, it almost feels like you have to live in the states to experience those. Because yeah, very people in rare. Europe. Yeah. And then, like I played Pokemon. Um and. We would always laugh at EU people and their little baby <laughs> baby tournaments. Hey, we try. Okay. <laughs> Come here and go to a real tournament. <laughs> Yo, you you want a regionals? That's cute. That's cute. That's like a side of a city <laughs> level two. <laughs> like the shade. Okay. Like a mean size. <laughs> 
Nice. I like this. This is what I've been asking for. Shady doesn't give me any shade at all. As well. this is I'm not shading. I'm just repeating, like, just, you know, I'm just recounting what the attitude was. Not me personally. Yeah, but I'm... I mean, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, yeah. The, the five hours was a, like an exception, and that was an awful day. Yeah. There's the system broke. The pairing system like stopped functioning. The computers they had to do it by hand, over 500 people. So that's why it took so long. Anyway. <laughs> well, from this, I have deduced tournaments. We like them, right? Like I, I would say that's the least of my life. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like tournaments. Some people don't like them, but. In order to make them fair, it'd be it'd be really tough, especially with the Hearthstone audience, to have like long, long tournaments, you know, day long or half a day long, and uh, you know, Not. we're apparently spoiled. But you know, I, I still would appreciate more tournaments, regardless. Um, just I think um, they're still fun. Just... You don't play in mine. Yeah, speaking of tournaments, right? We do have leagues and and things like that. I know you have your own. League. You've got the Moon Coin League going on if you want to talk about that as well. I do. I do actually. Oh. Um, it's this week is week four and um it's on Saturday at starts at noon EST. So that would be three hours ago. And it's a 12 week league, uh, but the twelfth week is the top sixteen. And the there's a tournament every week, you know, up until then, so up to 11 and then every day we also have multiple daily lobbies which give you points and i i kind of stole the point structure from pokemon also oh, okay. because i didn't want people to have to play every weekend right because again spoiled hearts and players um but also the individual tournaments on the weekends don't give out prize money but the top 16 is it has a three thousand dollar prize pool and if you make top 16 you're guaranteed to make money you'll get money uh, if you make the finals so basically what we're doing is your best four finishes are going to count. So if you can only attend four tournaments, but you make top eight in all of them, then that'll, that'll count. And if you play more than four, like if you place in, if you get a placement top eight in six tournaments, only your best four will count. We'll drop the lowest scores. Uh, and so also for the daily, the daily lobbies, we've, I think today we ran at least three, maybe four, because if we get enough signups, we we do multiple simultaneously, and it's just one. And there's one at noon and EST and 3 p.m. EST. And if you win, you get two points, and second place gets one, and you can finish in 10 of those. And we're keeping cumulative scores for anyone who participates. And we have a big, we have a table that says everyone's score. And, you know, that way you can go check it and see how many points you would need to get into the top 16. And yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah, it definitely does sound fun. You've got guest casters as well going on, mm -hmm. I've seen. So it's always nice. Yeah, you to... guys should come cast. Yeah, for sure. Just invite me and I'll, uh, I'll show up most likely. Uh, this seems quite fair, I would say, in terms of just like uh, tournament structure, right? Since you have multiple tournaments going on, the, the top 16 yeah. all go. So it's, I would say Consistency. it's Consistency. Yeah. It's a little bit more fair than the tournament structures we have, where it's like, here's your one shot. Did you yeah. did you win? <laughs> no. It's much no, no, more no. fair. Did you get hooked, Oscar, or not? Yeah. Huh? Did you get hooked, Oscar, or not? That's probably oh, yeah. even more, right? It starts with the hero. Right, that's right but in true. mine, you have 11 chances to. So, I mean, that's significantly better than one. Yeah, that, that is something we didn't talk about in the tournament uh, topic, where it, 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 some at some times the the tournament results kind of feel relying on what heroes you hit. Uh, at least in yeah. this meta game where it's like, did you hit like top five hero? No. Oh no, well, you didn't win a game. Then. <laughs> yeah, you're bottom four now. Uh, and uh, that always feels really bad because uh, you know sometimes I'll be in a tournament, I'll look at the hero selection, and I'm just like, well, uh, this is not going to be fun, right? And then. I'll look at my opponent's selection. I'm just like, yeah, all right, we're, <laughs> we're not winning this describing, one. Describing <laughs> describing my experience yeah. so far with yeah. tournaments I've played in. Yeah, so I, I, I do. I'm like, think, I'm going for fourth. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wanna, I, I would love to see an like an alternative to that where it's not just like hero, uh, 
reliant, right? Because some of the good heroes are like really good at winning, right? And some of the mediocre heroes are not good at winning, right? Like they're they're specifically not good at like beating the people that can high roll. And when you have a a hero that isn't very good at getting first, but you know if you want to win the game or you want to win the tournament, you have to be first, right? It's 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 kind of uh, demoralizing and like. I've already lost without even like rolling a shop, essentially. Yeah. So, I would love yeah. to have a some type of balance where it's not that dramatic. Where even if you don't get like the exact absolute best hero, you can still like do something. But when the players are so good that you know, oh, they got a good hero. <laughs> yeah, that's I, just know, the nature it, of the game, though. Yeah, it's so tough. Uh, but that's yeah. why you need a high um, sample size. Yeah, a large sample size. So I do like the um, this league format. I'd love to see more leagues um, just for uh, battlegrounds. I know there, I mean, you you get players right. You have multiple lobbies right because you have so many players signing up. So um, I would love to just see more leagues and and su such where you can have consistency be a huge factor, right? A lot of the terms we have, it's more, it's less about consistency and more about high roll capability. Are you able to take a good hero and win? Versus, are you able to take lots of heroes, good and bad, and be consistent with all of them, right? That's not really tested, I would say, in, in a lot of these tournaments that we uh, we participate in. So just being able to have leagues where you can be like, okay, I've I've been consistent enough, right? I can make it to the to the cutoff, right? So uh, I do like uh, your league, and I, I just wanted to, you know, talk about it. You know, it's always fun watching it yeah. as well. Yeah, it's been really fun, and I really like watching it. It's we just chill, honestly. Like um, myself and whoever's casting, we just kind of talk about random stuff, and um, yeah, we talk about the game too. But it's like informal and just more like hanging out. And I think that, I mean, it's been really nice community building. Um, it's competitive, but not too competitive, and people can still have fun. So that's important to me. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, so if you guys want to join it uh, every week, the next one's on the seventeenth. So you know, feel free mm -hmm. to check that out. Uh, it's next, on my Twitter. Definitely check out the on my Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Uh, next thing we want to talk about is rally. I know a lot of the Hearthstone streamers have been like uh, looking into rally and stuff like that. And I, since we have a rally expert, I don't know if that's the title you want, but you're gonna <laughs> have it. I wanted to just see if you wanted to talk about it uh, and just tell us what it's about. Rally just got listed on Coinbase, I think, nice. like yesterday. That's, that's pretty cool. That's huge. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And um, sure, I can I can uh, pitch for Rally, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, it's called the uh, Creator Coins. And what it is is a personal creator economy, basically. Uh, Rally facilitates that by using their side chain, um, which is um, off Ethereum, and they host, you know, tokens from many people now. I think there's like over fifty creators, and the creators are streamers, musicians. Um, you, we have like some wrestlers and like football players and um, people, authors and like, lecturers, okay. reporters, like so many. <laughs> different kinds of content creators and the purpose of it is because if you ever thought about what would happen if like amazon decided to shut down twitch it would probably wouldn't be cool right it wouldn't be like uh, the best day of your life no, it you'd have to figure out like oh, what the heck am i gonna do <laughs> and it's sort of not a smart business decision to have all of your you know finances and income tied up into a platform that you have absolutely zero control over um because amazon a amazon could just one day decide like you know what twitch isn't profitable enough we're facing too much pressure from music industry to deal with that problem and we're just gonna close it and yeah a lot of creators would just be out of a job and um so rally's really nice because it gives a way for your supporters to um support you that's it doesn't have like platform fees like twitch takes half your sub <laughs> rally doesn't take uh, any of your money and um 
there's a lot of different use cases for it. You know, they're about to launch NFTs and you can really control how your coin is used. It's so it's entirely up to you um, to provide value for it or not, or, you know, it, it's anything you want. So is that, is that a good explanation? Yeah, yeah that's, that that's fantastic. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, I know you've been using them to help with the leagues and stuff like that. So it's been mm -hmm. helping uh, for the tournaments and just like creating opportunities to support the people that are watching you as well. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's lets me give back to my community and I wouldn't be able to do it without rally. <laughs> like I couldn't just get 300 or $3,000 out of my pocket right. for these. So, um, yeah, I've been, I've gotten to, creative use grants from rally i guess to help fund the tournaments and another thing they do that um it's not really an investment thing so i'm not like giving it it's not a speculating thing like you shouldn't go and buy creators coins just to speculate on them like they can make a profit or whatever it's really if you want to support the creator and you believe in what they're doing and uh, if you think they're gonna grow and um and whatnot but Rally does this thing that is kind of like interest, I guess, um, where a community will get rewarded if the coin grows. So if the average um, amount of liquidity in the coin is higher one week than the average of the previous four, uh, Rally distributes um, more of the Rally token. So it's like rewards, they call it, out to the whole community, proportionate to how much of the specific coin you hold and how long you've held it. So you basically get rewarded for um, for holding on to a creator's coin, for participating in their economy. And I think that's really awesome. <laughs> Sounds nice. You know, I, I always been interested. I don't know too much about it, but, you know, I always wanted to ask since you were here. Yeah, sound, sounds mm -hmm. good. And uh, looks like you've had a good experience with it. So, okay. you know, I wanted to share the message. You know, if you want to support yes. Nicolina, go to Rally <laughs> and uh, buy some coins, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, I just want the top thing for me is to make sure that I am uh, providing value to my coin holders. And okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, next thing, we shall be going on to some uh, hero topic discussions. We have Mutinous is our hero for the day. Mm -hmm. Right now, Mutinous is doing amazing, according to HS Replay, which I would not say is like the be all end all for statistics but in there it's it's number one which is pretty impressive i don't think i was expecting that when um he came out you know i just looked at him and i was like not number one you know i was looking at his his mm. voracious appetite and like no nah, i can't he can't satisfy the player base <laughs> but apparently he can he does really well and especially with um like how people have been utilizing him. I know, um, like Cleves, I know how much we, we don't like Cleves, but Mutinous uses Cleves really well. Mm -hmm. If you can eat it and hit yeah. the target, Divine Shields do well. Beast Comp with Mutinous, if you have two Mama Bears, especially with the Mama Bear buffs, right? It's yeah. it's very easy to, to start buffing like plus 10, plus 10, plus 12, plus 12 per turn very easily. So has a lot of upside. Another really nice thing is that even if you hit like a bad target, it's not as big of a deal where at some heroes it, it would be where you just eat that target, you eat whatever you buff and you just go on to the next minion. So uh, has a lot of upside there. It's been pretty solid, pretty good, uh, stable hero. Maybe not the best hero for dominating a lobby, but can win and has a good um, baseline and that you're not going to get eighth most of the time when you play it. I think the hero is just very safe, like you mentioned, right? I think that's just an upside to where it's so often that you find a way, the hero power, and just get that, fix your curve and get stronger. I guess that's probably the best way to say it. Fix your curve and get stronger. That's just, that's beautiful, right? I mean... Yeah, I had the opposite when I came out. I thought it was going to be so broken. And then it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't immediately broken. But I, I specifically made a video of being like this is broken <laughs> and because it's just like you're telling me i get the gold back for selling the minion but i also get to keep the stats like that seems pretty good right and yeah. um it's just a really good amount of value but then it 
did okay and it wasn't like amazing but I think obviously like my Ev being removed really let it rise up higher and also people got more used to the play style and like um, I think became more adept at uh, utilizing the hero bar too yeah I'm always fascinated about when heroes come out and then initial reactions and then reactions like down the line like uh like later on when people actually start knowing how to use the hero properly right because that happens a lot and it, it mm-hmm. always it's always funny how people are like oh i played this hero day one it sucks and i'm just like mm-hmm. okay <laughs> like, whatever yeah and then like a month later the same person's like oh i played the hero it's actually really good and i'm like i know i why mm-hmm. why did you come here earlier telling me it sucks when you hadn't played it you played one game and made your whole va- reaction off of that so always always find that funny and i'm glad to, to see the heroes are complicated enough where it takes time to learn how to play correctly and then adjust from there i think vulgin is kind of the same way yeah. isn't vulgin like doing a lot better now and yeah, there's a lot of heroes that have that um like it's what you have to think a little bit or you have to watch someone utilize it properly for you to be like oh that's how you do it or oh i i never thought about using it this way or sometimes I'm yeah. talking to, uh, um other players and they're like oh i just like uh, use this hero power level straight to four and then we're good and i'm like wow i've never thought about just leveling straight to four and i'm like why didn't i think about that level straight to four it's genius <laughs> speaking of like that exact thing just want to interject that i um i discovered a new way to play galakron today i didn't discover it but i was made aware uh-huh. and i didn't get to try it out after but we, we, i was spectating the daily lobby and the the person who's in the lead right now for the for the league Loranes. Like, uh, yeah. um yeah so he plays it like uh not really trying to hear a power one minion and just like freeze it the whole game and get a six drop or whatever which is kind of the way that everybody's been playing galakron but he just went to four pretty quickly i get i'd say mm-hmm. and then you know just kept hero power and getting five drops and getting light fangs and um it worked out really well and he won the lobby <laughs> and he basically didn't leave four until like really late so i th- thought that was really smart and i want to try that strat up yeah you're calling staying on four really smart <laughs> it worked beautifully it was like no, i i like that too something I, I to watch it, i think with gallic ground fishing for fives it's, it's be, i mean if you have the menagerie yeah. set up right like yeah mythrax light fang brand just uh, yeah, lots of good stuff in there well, i look for <laughs> he even like so added look for he kind of added quill bores at the end because he ended up like later in the game um getting a charl gut and getting a you know, the agam guy so you're just like it, it just was really good for him to obtain good minions in like starting even before the second half of the game i guess fascinating because you get to choose yeah you do get to choose i i think that is definitely a viable strategy you know i'm always like why get fives when you can get six so obviously <laughs> there's gonna be some gains where the six suck or the fives are way better you know so mm-hmm. if, if i'm you... just saying in this particular game he went for light fangs but you could apply the same principle to any comp you want it's always safer to go for the lower tier if it makes sense right because with if you spend that extra turn leveling right you're spending the extra turn leveling you're spending the extra turn not scaling you're spending the extra turn hoping that you do you know you don't get unlucky with your hit but with that one time right so especially with galakron right when fives are perfectly acceptable if you hit a good one right if you just get to four and then you're able to get a lot of good fives that's that's probably going to be a lot more consistent than going to five and try to get it tonight get six. So I, I definitely respect it. And I think it makes a lot of sense. But I, I do think that it's nice that heroes have a curve of leveling where you understand it the more as you play it. You know, moving back to this. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Have you done the um, the one where you don't level on two with Mutinous? Where you just... Um... If you get a, a token or let's say a um, bacon, you can actually use the hero up already pretty effectively on turn two, but you do need something that you're willing to sell. And then just the turn after that, or or you could even do something where you get like Wrath Weaver and then you like buy a demon, sell a demon, blah, 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 blah. So sometimes it doesn't make sense, right? I think a lot of the time you just level up, 
but I think a decent portion of the time, if you have the right pieces for it, it's pretty interesting to um, to just not level and um, just catch up, kind of like you do with Hook Dusk, right? When you have your Hook Dusk curve, you level on five gold instead of on four gold, so you need that extra gold then, right? You need to have your Sally ready or your Alley Cat or whatnot. Uh, but then you just catch up later on, uh, and it's perfectly fine because you're Hook Dusk. And it feels like Mutinous has a similar thing where you can catch up because you can just you know, buy a thing, eat it at level or something like that, right? You get your extra gold. Um, so it feels it feels really good to me to to start using it as early as possible when I play this guy. I uh I don't do that, but maybe I should. I just, you know, level normally, turn eight gold, you know, eat something by three and just start like trying to hit the divine shield with the cleaves, you know. Hope it works out for me. I think uh, there's a lot of ways to play the hero, obviously. So definitely um, take a look and ask people if you want to learn their secrets like that. But yeah, what about you, Nicolina? You do any like early game stuff with this guy or just like I've calls? Only, I think I've played like only maybe four games, maybe That's three fair. games with Mutinous. So I, I honestly don't remember <laughs> how they went and they were a while ago because oh. I don't think I've gotten to play him in the last three days. Fair enough. I I think yeah. another generic thing for this guy is just you really value uh, cards that are just good at generating stats where normally you wouldn't value those minions because you wouldn't keep them, right? So you have the 3-3 three, three quill bore that grows every time you hit a gem. Talking yeah. about Hank? Oh, yeah, Hank, of course. Of oh, course. I actually played one game with him and I used Taunt Comp and I the 4-4, four, four, uh, the, the gross. Hank. Yeah, and My you hear a... Did you hear a power no, champion? No, no, not Hank. The one no, who, not the Hank. Yeah. You mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was Vulgin. Sorry. Sure. No, I mean, that's also... Fun. Same I mean, idea. Same <laughs> idea, really. Vulgin likes this, too. Good, Vulgin that would likes, work with me in this, too. Vulgin, likes, Vulgin likes that guy even more because you can extract yeah, the gems. Yeah, and, exactly. like, oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Um, it doesn't it's even have to be that, right? Like, <laughs> it can be something silly like Sorrelisk, Wrathweaver, you know, something that, like, oh, it can absorb stats really easily. But you don't always keep uh, yeah. that. And then the when you mutinous, play it, yeah, you just slap. I actually did get to play it the first day it came out, and I used a Wrath Weaver, and it was like insane. <laughs> and also, the really good thing about it is, it's like not like you can only transfer those stats once. If it doesn't really, if it doesn't land on the minute you want, you could just do Go it again. next turn. <laughs> like, okay, I'll try again. I I had that. Uh, I think earlier earlier today or yesterday, I can't remember, but I have the shaker that just wouldn't stop eating my buffs and I wouldn't want to sell them. Yeah. So the but shaker was up to 60 that. health and I was just like, my goodness, shaker, please give something yeah. to the please give something to the shield. Yeah. I was spectating, I think, one in the tournament and like they had a vulgar homunculus since the very beginning that kept getting all it was the biggest homunculus I'd ever seen because it just kept getting the stats every time. It was kind of sad to watch, but Sounds like fun, you know. <laughs> good I'm... times, good times. Um, Sounds like I'll be. I'm gonna be right back. I see. You can feel free to uh, discuss the next card. Yeah, yeah. I'll show Sounds you when good. I get back. Uh, one second. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Uh, but generally, mutinous. I think it's really strong right now. Pretty safe hero to to pick up. Uh, lots of power, especially since you don't have to commit to whatever you hit. Right? If you hit something you don't like, you just eat it. Alternatively, and can definitely win lobbies, right? Even though it's a safe hero, it still wins lobbies. That's what I think. That's the like the trait of a really good hero, right? It doesn't lose. It it doesn't lose that often. And even though it might not like, it might not be the best for winning. It it can win, right? Because you'll you'll have those heroes where it doesn't lose but doesn't win, right? Or has those heroes wins a lot, dies a lot, you know, like yeah, you know, so. You want the ones that don't don't die, doesn't die a lot, but can still win or wins a lot as well, right? And, and this one fits the curve. Uh, Cthulhu as well uh, has that really similar play style, right? But does doesn't lose a lot, but wins a you know, but but doesn't win a lot either, right? And like you know, Alex Straza, I guess is is the one that like is the opposite. You know, wins My a ass. lot, but yeah. also you know dies. <laughs> <laughs> the same amount so <laughs> doesn't really feel that safe of a hero to pick right you want you definitely want one that uh wins and wins and doesn't die and this is definitely feels that uh niche really well so 
really good hero them moving on we'll talk about um our minion it would be crackling cyclone i think this is a pretty interesting unit in that it's one of the only elementals with divine shield right and it's also a divine shield on three which has a lot of upside for some um you know some heroes right they really want something that they can commit to early right cyclone is one of those heroes where if you get it early and you're playing the right composition you can be like i'm keeping this the rest of the game right also fits uh taunt comp well if you can taunt it up give a put an arm there right this can be one of your pieces for um arms and and whatnot so there's a lot of usability with this hero uh, especially if you'd golden it right i've definitely had those moments where a golden cyclone like kills my whole board basically right where it's just like yeah all right there goes four minions well i can't do anything with four minions against seven right it's it's over for me yeah so uh definitely one of those key uh units right where i think the game would be different if this this card wasn't in uh, especially for elementals right sometimes you play elementals you have a lot of good, like tanky minions but they don't have divine shield so someone plays like scam comp you have no chance right here you can two for one at least so um there's a lot of value in this minion and uh you know not necessarily sad to see it in the game i think it's a good addition what about you nicolino any thoughts on crackling um, I know before I put it in my overrated minions video because it's based on like HS replay stats and also I felt it's pretty bad early game but definitely gets a lot better late game especially with Mutinous now can use it really well but I think um, in general it's, it tends to be a bit of a bait um, and I don't take it unless like I said it's late game and it fits, fits in with Menagerie or um, Menagerie but uh yeah because i think it's pretty hard countered countered by the tutu taunt um, early <laughs> like it's so bad against that right it's like oh i killed the tutu taunt thanks <laughs> um and i think a lot of people kind of get baited by it and they're like oh it has divine shield so it's amazing but it's just not really that good and if they have multiple taunts it tends to like hit one and then hit the other and <laughs> does nothing also so in the at least I, I haven't checked the stats on it in a while, but in, it, it wasn't a good minion before. I don't might it might have got better, but I think that's a fair take, and we see both sides of the coin here. Uh, I'm definitely a bit more prone to saying, yeah, Cyclone isn't that good, but that is mm -hmm. if we are just considering it as like, oh, we're playing it as a tier three minion, and it's just going to be yeah. that. I think if you have a plan for it, it's totally fine to pick it up, right? Um, yeah. You know, like you get an arm, sure. arm like Collins mentioned, yeah. you know, like, hey, yeah, there we go. That's a good minion now. Or you're yeah. just, you know, you're Edwin, you're Rakanishu, or even, you know, something as simple now as you're, you're playing Bran, the new Bran, and you're like, oh, well, I will be playing buffs later on. So this is actually pretty good. But I do yeah. think if you're just saying, oh, you know, I need to be strong right now. Ooh, huge minion, Divine Shields. Divine Shields are crazy good, mm -hmm. right? And that, uh, that, that went one for one with an Acolyte. I'll be damned. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's part of the reason you put it more towards the middle now. Like, I've learned that lesson. It's like, all right, you don't lead here. All right, the other ones go first. So, but I think a lot of people then, put like, it regardless, right? And just get crashed into it. Yeah. So, I guess, yeah, from the perspective of, like, if you're not if you're not able to buff it like that turn it's probably not gonna be good and like yeah you said you can put it later but also it's a bit worse later because it can yeah, just turn into token by, later on right yeah. yeah for sure like if it goes into harvest goal and whatnot so i would say that it's like not the best minion but not the worst minion and it has like niche uses I like the card, you know. You guys are just <laughs> slamming on this card. Well, Holy we got to put it like this, right? When, when you when you look at it with divine shields, people are gonna be like, "Oh yeah, it's a divine shield minion, just like Deflector and Bronze Warden," right? They're like, "No, not quite. Those two are on a different level." Cyclone like is fine, and you'll yeah, you'll take it. And you know, as we said, it has a future, right? You can buff it. You can be a hero that has a specific plan for it. Um, but if we're just talking about standalone value, it, it does not really come close to a Bronze Warden. And, and then Deflecto, mm -hmm. sure, at the start is not really that much better. 
if better at all but you know one reset and suddenly oh wow that's that's way better than cyclone he's like i'm just as good as those other love tavern three design shield minions why are you <laughs> hating on me i also do exactly what they do and they're just well, like i this is just the laughing. thing i guess I, I would want to impart on the viewers is you see this sometimes where someone will buy minions on tier three and then push four and think they're strong and that is just a massive difference whether that's two cyclones on their board or two bronze wardens right the person with two bronze wardens <laughs> is far more likely to not take damage than the person with two cyclones yeah, that's rough that's yeah you don't you just don't want to give them that false sense of security oh i got two cyclones i'm popping off baby yeah i think it's better i think it's just better added later when you can buff it all right, all right. I hear you guys. I hear you guys. Da, da, da. Cyclone is okay, apparently. According and you have to, to the... buff it a lot. I, I, to... I would say it is indeed at the very least okay, but just overhyped. I, I think yeah. that's the thing, right? Overrated. People are, <laughs> yeah. People are conditioned to see Divine Shield and think the minion is yeah. nutty. And exactly. for a lot of Divine Shield minions, that's true. It's just in this case, this early on, that's not an insane minion that early on. Wouldn't you even say, Shady, that it's probably the worst I have minion. never seen so yeah. much hate for it a is, divine right? shield minion the thing is like once you start buffing I it, it. <laughs> so I, I will say that there is substantial upside to the wind fury later on right so if you yeah. are going to make it part of the menagerie or if you are say going to triple it um, there are tons of good applications here right you can play against a uh, scam comp for instance and only has one scally yeah. taunted and suddenly the wind fury snipes a cabgar you can play against beast mm, the scally way goes first but yeah but if you kill the so scally. what they'll do is um some people only taunt one scally and then the yeah, second mm -hmm. scally is untaunted and then yeah, they think annoying. oh yeah but they think like oh you go into it and then the second scally will attack but the cyclone yeah, hasn't done it. Today in a game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because it's that guy. His exact scenario just happened to me today. Okay, which is why yeah. I taught both my scallies, by the way. Everyone always yeah. asks, what about Cleave? I'm just like, what about Witch <laughs> yeah. But that's why Frick Cleave, because Cleave is so dumb. And like, if you didn't have to <laughs> think about Cleave, <laughs> then you sure. can do other things. But Talk yeah. the whole board. Let's it's go. Not, it's not one thing, it's the other thing. Like, okay, so if I don't have. If nope. I taunt both, then this, they this have. Is obviously going if I don't little... taunt both, they have wind fury. <laughs> I, I, I get that. Right? This is going both, a little yeah. off track. Um, yeah, but yeah. I'm a scam. I'm a scam, scam I'm a, no, no, no. And I, I, I love it. Don't worry. You're good uh, at scam comp. You, you gave me a lot of tips like last time we were. Yeah, I, I love know, playing it. And, and it's it's the comp I win like most games with. I think I win. I love <laughs> most to hear games it. that I actually win, they're with that comp. So. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I mentioned the Baron, right? That's good for cleave protection, where um, yeah, yeah. Death Rattlers get batched in. So yeah. that, that's the thing why I don't mind taunting both Skellies. You just put the Baron next to it, and it sucks that you, you do lose the body. You right? lose, that, yeah. that is one body that is not getting buffed, but you don't lose any buffs, at and least. They all don't, don't they all not spawn if they both die at once? They do, do, do spawn? All? They, no, I, I, I think as long as you have board know. space, you're good. Yeah, they do yeah. spawn, but some will spawn at the end and they won't get like they won't get like sometimes the cadgar uh multiplicative buff where sometimes you're yeah. spawning like a uh, 20 20 20 because one won't attack yeah yeah so you you end up having uh some being spawned as like two threes into three or four twos or whatever they well, we're, we're finding three. a way to shit on it's clean. so hard to keep track right. of but like i feel like it's hard to keep track. I, I don't usually sit. I don't ever sit there and count exactly how many I got. You know what I mean? But I guess I had a feeling like I, I do. You don't get as you many. Don't, you don't. You don't love like, just I'm watching sure them do, out. Yeah. Uh, One scallywag, <laughs> two scallywag. <laughs> I don't three know how many are supposed to come out in advance. <laughs> you know, I'm That's just like I, I think do this in is my right. head every time. So you know, yes, I, I, I'm pretty sure the correct number Use comes out. Yeah, even if they get cleaved, so that's that's pretty fine. However, we're shitting on uh, Cyclone for some reason. I like it. Maybe one of the weaker Divine okay. Shield minions, but still good and has some use cases that it performs well. In. I guess that's uh, how we will uh, end that one here. I love it though. No, I don't love it, but I think it's it's being underrated here. <laughs> Just because it gets compared to other Divine Shields. Right. Yeah. 
if you compare but, it to exactly. like regular a four four Murloc on tier three, this is god tier. Don't get me wrong, but you know. But what if you have a whole board of Murloc? Then it's still worse. Oh, then no, then you lose because <laughs> have you have a board of Murlocs, you're destined to lose. Probably not that turn, but that's, that's <laughs> later, true. yeah. Probably. No, that's how they get you, right? You have a board of Murlocs, and then it makes sense to buy more Murlocs, and before you know yeah. it, you're Murlocs and you're yeah. dead because it doesn't work. Yeah, we've been talking yeah. that Murlocs are like the weakest composition right now, unless you have a very specific. Yeah. Game plan. I, uh, so. It's, it's Dude, like I got a bit of, it's a bit of a today with a board of Jandis, Begurgle, Bran, and I had like a 70 70 Murloc and 90 wow, 90 Murloc, and I got sixth. <laughs> that, that is okay. what I would call a plan, and it still didn't work out. So that's very confusing. So yeah. is is that the Alakir Cleave situation, or is it just like nope. some point Divine Shield stuff? Or? Divine Shields, yep, Divine Shields. Just oh. regular, massive, massive Divine Shields. Was it yeah. yeah. Tone Comp? No, just random, massive, huge. I think it was like uh, the Quill Border thingy. Like, uh, I go, oh, ground shaker. Yeah. Okay. Ground okay. shaker is. Uh, yeah. I don't even think so. No, they just they were just huge. Oh, it wasn't even ground shaker. I would have to go back and look, but I know it had Aga Aga Mom. Oh, Aga usually when they have like. Flame. Oh right. It was just yeah. a okay. person that was randomly insanely strong. Is that I don't remember. Lobby? I was surprised <laughs> that I died. I don't think so. This is just my normal games, guys. Oh god. <laughs> You don't have people? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you don't have those games? I thought I was going to win the game. That was how I thought Collins, I was going. Collins is the guy with the cool boys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. It, well, it was menagerie. He's doing that it to was menagerie people. <laughs> with, with Iron, with Iron Man. Feels bad, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. Next topic we shall talk Purple about. Brand, I think. Is um, okay, setting mm -hmm. up menagerie composition. So. Sometimes you'll be playing a game and then you'll be like, oh, I could go menagerie, right? I just want to talk about how do we do that correctly? Like what, what board states are there? I think there's multiple ways of setting it up, right? I think one of the most common that I see people do is, okay, I'll get the light fang. Oh, I hit light fang. Okay, now let me look for my pieces, right? Where some other people will be like, okay, I have a I have a Hydra or something. No, they won't have a Hydra. I'll have a I have Bronze Warden. I think that's the most common. Then I hit Deflecto yeah. and then oh okay. If I level to five, I could hit Life Fang and then I have a Menagerie sub and then they'll level and look for the Life Fang and go from there. Right. So uh there are multiple ways to to set up a menagerie and just like they have like different effectives or, or different use cases, right? Some people triple to four, right? With like a a menagerie set up preemptively, right? They'll triple four, look for the five, right? And then they get the immediate life fang and they already have a good board for life fang, right? And I think that sometimes that's hard to set up, but that's something you have to be aware of, right? When you're playing these games, you're looking at what's in the pool, right? Another thing is looking at, man, I, I don't want to take everything, right? But I, I think another thing you can do is just look at what's in the pool and see, oh, can, does menagerie even make sense in an option this game, right? If Dragons are gone, sometimes that hurts. If beasts are gone, sometimes that hurts. If mechs are gone, that can hurt a lot. So if you see, oh, mechs, mechs, beasts, dragons are gone, you're like, ah, you know, what type of menagerie sub would I even make if, if I do get a light fang here, you know? And then you have to be aware of, can I set it up here? I, even with those gone, it doesn't mean it's like impossible, right? You can still do, Amalgadon makes anything possible is a quote I've never said, but it should be said. <laughs> if you have like, for Amalgadons, it doesn't matter. You can make anything, right? Menagerie included. So um, there's a lot of different ways to sub Menagerie, and I just wanted to see what your thoughts on, on those were. Katie, if you want to go. So the, I, I guess you, you've covered a, a big part of it, right? I, I, I think I, that's good. I felt like I took too much. <laughs> no, it's all good, right? You cover it. So I, I like to do the special thingies anyway, right? So I, I think it's specifically when you're playing something that you know is good at producing five drops or you know you're going for five drops that game. So I, I think the best possible example is Jandis. I Jandis knew you were is, mentioning Yeah, Jandis. right. You know my girl Jandis, right? She's <laughs> fat Jandis. shit broken OP and hits people in the She's face a lot of the time and is kind of a design issue. But, you know, other than that, love love playing her. Uh, if you do get a token, right? Yeah, if you don't get a token, it's not it's not crazy. Uh, if you want to jump in, Nicolina, go go for it. By the way, I just like Jandis. 
put in my throw in my support for Janice. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, she gets a lot of hate from people, and, and my I do. Favorite hero. Yeah, I, I think she's amazing. Okay, well, I'm not going to open up like, the, the balance the favorite, uh, issue, right? right? So, the... um, so what does what does Janice do for anyone who's like doesn't play Janice? Like she um makes triples with tokens and then usually what you're gonna do is hold the tokens in the hand and then make two five drops now there's different curves you can do sixes you can do a four and a six or whatnot but a very common curve is you get two five drops and with that knowledge you can really start scanning your board and saying okay what's better this two three dragon or this two two reborn taunt and i think in a lot of cases you'd be okay with the two two reborn taunt because it has some upside you can play Harbinger with it, but specifically if you know you're going to get fives and you know that Lightfang and Mithrax are such good cards to pull, you'll keep the dragon for sure so that you have an extra type. And that's the same thing, right? You're always going to get either Beast or Murloc, the token you're swapping. So then either you have this like random hyena or this random Murloc in case you're swapping cats. And, and that's such a big deal because if you get two Lightfangs on that turn, you could have three four minion types being buffed or one or two depending on your prep work so i think that's huge and i think that's a big part that good <laughs> players do all the time they just think ahead and they're like okay if i get lucky how am i actually going to use this right the same thing when you're shooting for caligos do you have a board full of dragons already or not right do you have a couple <laughs> dragons matter. just get caligos anyway <laughs> yeah right so, like that. just make it work that's yeah, yeah. that's that's cool so. I, have, I have two health it's fine i have no dragons it's fine i'll get caligos yeah. <laughs> <That's a bit laughs> it's a bit of an exaggeration borderline you know i have to think about it for a, like two extra seconds before i click the card yes i agree <laughs> It's the responsibility. Do you have anything specific for Menagerie that you want to share, Nicolina, or just like... I don't think I'm like amazing at Menagerie, but I think it's because I whiff Lightfang all the time. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I don't... I actually, today... Wait, no, I posted yesterday on my YouTube video was Menagerie with Zyrella. But I do think that I agree with completely with what you said, and I think that I tend to... I don't like um think that I'm going to get it, like, I don't, like, think, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to five and get Light Fang. But I will tend to, you know, pick up minions of different types in case, you know. Um, I also think that not only does that help you out a lot when you have Menagerie, but it gives you a bunch of different directions you can take regardless um, of if you get Light Fang. You know, you can just, if you have at least something from multiple tribes, you're being locked into one tribe, especially early on, is just so so bad. I think. Yeah. I I think to to build on that, a, a character that really loves that, and Collins probably also knows what I'm gonna say now, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's uh, it's Millhouse, right? So uh, when yeah. when you are when you are playing Millhouse, the thing you mentioned, and I love that, is um, being able to use as many different things that are being thrown at you, and that is especially true with Millhouse because. You can easily buy a clunker on Millhouse because it's one gold for plus two, plus two, and you'll take that, especially early on in the yep. game. And not every other hero wants to make an investment because it's twice as much. You're paying two gold per buff then. Um, so yeah, for Millhouse, incredibly important. If you, you know, you have your initial stage, I would say with Millhouse, where you're trying to triple early into a six, but if you don't get that to work, you're usually rolling a bit on four because you're usually not yeah. going to be strong enough to just go to five, right? And it is when and you're rolling I had up... this exact same game you're describing okay. the game I had Perfect. earlier. It's so funny. I was, I literally just, I had to buy random buffs and I had to buy a clunker and I just had to like, you know, I didn't have anything going on. And so I just had to buy every buff I saw, roll on four and try to make something out of it, which would be impossible to do if I had like all Murlocs. Yeah, it's a lot less miserable <laughs> you know if you don't do your triple if you at least have a board that can make use of most of the things in the shop and uh, i guess buffs. another good example would be uh bran is a great example right now because uh like millhouse the buffs are going to be more efficient now because they're cheaper because there's times two efficiency so um that, that's a specific one for brand where i've really been um hesitant to level early to four with brand i've been liking that eight gold turn to roll on three specifically with this uh goal in mind to okay yes i want to buy battle cries yes i want to get good minions but uh most of all i want to make sure that i have that good baseline so that when i do go to four and i do find a jug i'm not at least 
you know, I'm not like, oh, it's a jug, I guess. I'm gonna be like, oh, this jug is amazing, right? Let's go because I spent the previous turn setting up a couple types. So, you know, I'm getting full value and preferably on the vine shield, but that's obviously the high roll. I think I like never assume I'm gonna get light bank because I almost always don't get it. <laughs> you gotta always assume, um, assume that, you know, you gotta <laughs> hope for the best and then. Yeah, the hope worst, for it, but, but don't assume it. <laughs> Good yeah. But hope for it, baby. Sometimes you yeah. get lucky and uh, works out, you know. Those are really when games go well, right? You're hoping for this, and then you hit it, and then you're like, okay, I was, I was playing. Best. Yeah, I was playing for this, so this worked out really well for me. But a lot of times it doesn't. Yeah. It is something to keep in mind. When it does, it's like magical. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh, I, I will like, say. oh, my God. You know, I just <laughs> always want Caligos. I'm like, oh, Caligos would be perfect, and you get it, and you're like, uh, it's way it actually happens, right? Yeah. yeah. The, um, I, I do want to point out because we are talking about menagerie, and then I think that a lot of the cases you can use menagerie, but I do think it's a bit more on the back burner if we're talking just straight menagerie with uh, Light Fang uh, or Bran. I think right now the the more you know powerful version is the the Quillbore one, right, where you get the Agam and you set that up. Um, so I do think that just going to five and you know, RNG, pray RNG to get the uh, the Light Fang. That is a lot less powerful, in my opinion, in Clover lobbies because, you know, let's say you do hit it, you take that huge chance and you do get rewarded. You're probably not going to be the biggest person in the lobby, even though you got that super early Light Fang because, you know, Quillbores will outstat you or you just die randomly to some guy playing Ground Shaker in a mid game, <laughs> which is very frustrating. And I'm on both ends of that stick, right? I, I'm sometimes I play the ground shaker, sometimes I think, yes, I'm popping off, and I'm dead. Okay, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> ground shaker is really good, but I agree because I mean, obviously the light fang is capped at plus two, plus two a turn until you triple it, um, and then the agam is doesn't really, I mean, doesn't really have a limit on the stats they can give you in one turn. No cap. <laughs> no, <laughs> no cap. No cap. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. Uh, Light I, thing is hard cap. Mm, like, <laughs> feels bad, man. Yeah, but yeah, it's. I think it's an interesting topic just to talk about uh, menagerie. There's, everyone has like their favorite like setup in terms of like, oh, I have a. What's my favorite beast? I'll put a hydra here. What's my favorite dragon? Uh, bronze. What's <laughs> what? Who gets to pick out of like all the minions? Like they just have a catalog open. This one. I will order this one. I do Next, that sometimes. I sometimes. Jeez, I'm, dude. <laughs> I'm just like. Did I just take whatever one I get? I, 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 I have it. in my head, okay, I want this minion. And then I'm just like, yeah, all right, roll, here it is. Thank you. I'll roll, here is the next one in my head. Yeah. And then I'm just like... Do you use the secret? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, sometimes I'm I'm like, okay, I want this minion, but I make myself weaker. Let me rip off the Band-Aid, right? Let me just switch it immediately. And then, like, I'll take that, that damage, but yeah. I know the payoff will be worth it. If it's it. way better, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. You know, so I... But some... Sometimes don't you just find yourself like rolling to find a store that has yeah. something besides like the two types you already have Obvi in it? Obviously, <laughs> I do have those experiences and they yeah, are painful happens. and we don't talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I don't know. It's just like, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, of course, there's like definitely a best minion for each tribe. It's like Hydra, Bronze Warden, and um, the Wind Fury guy, Elemental, and pretty obvious, I think, which one is best yeah. that you would like yeah. to have if you could choose. Yeah. Some something to add in here, and just my own experience is that it it is hard to find that cutoff point where it is too late to swap, and and sometimes I do have that feeling of oh I guess I'm gonna swap, but I'm not really sure. And usually in those situations, I tend to regret swapping. I see. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, right. And the reason being not necessarily because I'm like, oh, I'm weaker. It's more the, oh, I'm going to need a board space soon anyway to transition into selfless Baron or something like that. So I think a lot of the time you keep this. I think Selemental is probably one of the better examples where you didn't find the Divine Shield Elemental early. You had a Selemental, was... you got early Light Fang, and it just you know, it stuck around and it's yeah. huge now, right? You get like this 2020 Selemental. And I think that's such an easy cut, right? When you say like, oh, I have an extra Amalgadon, let's just put that in. Oh, I have, I want to transition into the selfless Baron setup. 
And it was like, oh, what do you get rid of? So I think that is sometimes even underrated is a, the easy thing to replace where if you start to invest gold and that your board is premium, but you have nothing, you know, you have no flex slot that can become and very that, annoying where you're like, oh, but you know, that. I'm yeah <laughs> right and that then you're just like oh i invested this two gold to replace this elemental two turns ago but realistically the best place to sell it again now so not only did i waste yeah. gold i was also weaker mm. for two turns because i was investing Me in the future yeah so that's been you know that, that's something i do pay attention and ask myself okay am i gonna need a board slot soon is this really worth my gold and i was like okay never mind i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know upgrade yeah. gold very very fair i think that's uh that's true all right uh, moving on we have something a little bit new i have a little game that uh mm -hmm. one of our my viewers you mentioned to me why is turtle he has a little fun little thing i thought i wanted to see what you guys think about it uh it's called guest placement so here we have a board stay if you want to well i'll describe the board state they're playing reno uh, they have a selfless, they have a uh, 1 1 spore, they have uh 18 16 macaw, they got a this. 22 26 golden wrath weaver, they have a gas curler, they have a taunted 17 16 divine shield bronze bronze warden, and they have a taunted divine shield 18 17 deflecto bot. And I just wanted you to talk about discussing among yourselves. I unfortunately already know the placement, so it's kind of a. <laughs> right. it's, it's on the tell us, tell us, tell us. I have ADD. I cannot remember a single mini you said besides the Flectobot. I have to look at it. There's no possible yeah. way I can keep that. If you um, open the stream, uh, Nicole, uh, it's on there, right? So it's, it doesn't okay. matter. I didn't have it open. Yeah, I just want to. Give me a second. Uh, I can. Uh, I can also post it, I guess, to you. I no, I can just go to your stream. I just did not have it open. Do and we you have can also probably screen share with us? But that's fine. Is is there an MMR uh, thing that we know of or not? Um, it's high MMR. I I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh... Oh yeah, but uh, any any thoughts on this particular? Uh... I'm getting there. Well, shady, you me. can see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it, right? <laughs> no spoilers. Um, but the cool thing would be if we also knew the turns, but that's maybe asking a bit too much, right? If we knew what turn this game ended. Oh, no. This is work educated in progress. Collins, isn't have... your... Wait, what is your... It's not educated Collins? Underscore, yeah. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> Oops. Um, also in the uh, Discord as well. If you there if you is know. an educated cons, but they are offline. Yes, they uh they've been taking my name for years. I'm, I feel you have that. I wonder if that's me from a long time ago, and I just <laughs> forgot. Like I I legit. <laughs> it would be a coincidence if it was somebody else. Yeah, to be honest. Probably. But but be like and I like I just can't remember what the name was. I was like oh I, you know. I, I just wonder, like, was that just me? Like, from a long okay, time I can ago, see it now. Just forgot everything. I just don't know. But uh, that's uh, I I always find that particularly weird. But I've gotten over it, so I don't care anymore. But yeah, uh, in particular, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, there's no Baron to me. This feels more like like three to five or something in between that range. I don't know. Like, I feel like on average, this doesn't really take top two with one poisonous minion. So I'd we're say guessing anyway. what place they got in the game. Oh, yeah. I thought we had to decide the board placement. Okay, got it. Oh, right. Um, what you? What was your answer? I said three to five, so I gave a range of uh, two there. Seven. Seven down. Not a. Uh... Not uh yep. Not a lot of not a lot of love for this board. Not a lot of high placements here. Is this, uh, a, this one, I, I don't think this looked too good in the, any games I played today, really. Yeah, I think it's right. just really high power level for, for stuff. Right we will reveal the answer. Apparently, this got first. Place. Depends on the MMR, I guess, too. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I know he's above 10, I believe. So yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's always possible, right? Yeah, that it that's insane. No, we that's have, crazy. There's some comments That blows here. my mind. Apparently, he, <laughs> he killed people. That was the strat with this. 
He would, yeah, so well, this is what I said. The you. turn timer would have been great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Be like, oh, this is like, what, turn 11? Okay, well, this, uh, this is not a bad board. 11, yeah, yeah. No, that's, I, that's awful for turn 11. Are you I, serious? You can kind of see I, how I it worked not. in that. Are um, playing, guys? He has the <laughs> We're playing poison. different games. Oh, there's two big divine shields as well. It feels fair. Yeah, he's, he's got the These port. minions are in the teens. There's one minion above 20. There's one poison. Uh, what? The poison's there as a supplemental. But I, I want to play the game you guys are playing. Can you trade? I mean, it's got oh, power no. like Boiler. I don't know. I, I don't think oh, I would oh. get... <laughs> I think the Macaw Coiler is what was giving him the damage to knock people out very quickly. Apparently, it knocked out like half the lobby uh, with this setup. The Coiler was gold? I'd be like, yeah, okay. but <laughs> Well, you're essentially getting a gold Coiler, right? Because the Macaw is going to give you another trigger of, of the Coiler. So Wait, but you didn't face Alec here with Wind Fury Cleave that went first. That would all be dead. And then also the Mega Wind Fury, you know, they're just dead before it attacks. What are you talking about? Yes. <laughs> you guys. Listen. Obviously, this was a lucky game. Not how it <laughs> this is not. Uh, oh yes, just run this every time. You'll win every lobby. He definitely got oh lucky God. here, but Unreal. it just goes to show you sometimes. So you know, I do have games like this sometimes where I look at my board stay at the end, and I'm like, this one. You know, usually, usually it's usually I, I'm running some type of tempo composition where I'm blowing people out of the game before they get a chance mm. to recover. Right? And this is definitely a good example of. You know, sometimes if you just play to to kill people, that can be strong enough. Uh, uh, jugglers work really in that principle where you just have a you hero power a juggler, right? And you just run that. You just end up killing people before they get a chance to scale, and you're like, wow, that game went was over quickly because we killed them so fast. You know, I just thought uh, I thought that was really interesting. You know, just a uh, little example. I, I, th I thought it was fun. We have one more as well. The next one here. I'm clearly, gonna not guess any of these, right? Uh, we've got a Gallywix player. It's uh, he has a golden selfless. He's got a thirteen fifteen Hydra. He's got two. What is it? Two my 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 Exynos. This uh, is such a fun game. I have so many good ones. Sorry. Go ahead. A poison. <laughs> a poison. Uh, Malgadon nine nine, and then the divine shield thirty seven twenty six Deflecto, and the divine shield thirty seven twenty two. Uh, crackling cyclone, which you know, hey, in there. I just want to throw that in there. So, uh, what's what's your thoughts here uh, on you guys? What do, what do you think about this one in particular? This, this is hard to know where we don't know the opponent, right? So, the first thing when I look at this board is why is the cleave second? But it could be True. correct, right? I like, do we agree. don't, <laughs> yeah, so, kill anything, right? yeah, so that like, annoys me to no end. <laughs> Right. So my immediate my immediate instinct is like this is a crash player, right? Why is this cleave here? But there are more, boards. Yes. There are boards where it's correct, right? So there's multiple taunts, multiple divine shields, what right? And you just, ever kill? You know, they're just like super big. You just want to knock off the shields first and then poison. I get that. Oh, he's up. Okay, so I'm getting information. He's up against Taunt Comp. So obviously he loses mm -hmm. because Taunt Comp is amazing, right? And he doesn't have a ghoul. <laughs> So I don't know. It feels honestly, cause I'm gonna be honest. It feels like we're getting like this crummy board that got first. So now I see this like high tier poison <laughs> yeah. board. This is a solid top eight. Uh, you just look at this shit. Yeah. That just loses every time. Um, <laughs> right. Six. Maybe fourth. Though. I don't know. I, I wonder is is there more information no. that can be given here to help? Right. Like what There's turn? Is, I think turn placement is a good addition. Right. Like you know, this is the first. Yeah. This is the first edition, right? So I wanted to see what the reaction was, but I think that's that's true. Adding like a little bit more, like what you're up against and what uh what turn it is, I think those do help in uh in figuring out like a, a, a better way of figuring out what exactly placement you got there. So I think that's that is pretty interesting. I do I do think like oh it's turn twenty. Like <laughs> that's not you know that's, <laughs> that's a little unfair. <laughs> you know, but other than that, you know, uh, I do uh, I do agree with that. Also, knowing if it's a prize lobby or not, um, I think helps a lot as well. Um, there are there are a couple of things. Uh, your camera has swapped to uh, the. Uh, yeah, sorry, I think I'm showing my chat the sorry. board because oh, okay. they cannot see it. That's fair. That's very, very fair. <laughs> um, but what's your thoughts on that? Me? 
uh, either one, or I think it's. it's... Ben? I want to mm -hmm. play this game what, myself. I didn't listen to you. You know, Shady. <laughs> maybe next week you I can. I need the. Uh, I'll yeah. give you some. Well, of this game. Do we find out? I couldn't pay attention. All right. How? What? What did he get, uh, Carlos? Because I mean, my instinct is that. You can, it's can like... you hear? Yeah, we can hear Sorry? you. Sorry. Yeah, we oh, can okay. hear. Did you say like my instinct is just like I'm I'm suspicious by that. nature, right? So it feels like this is the debate where this is actually not a great placement, right? Where this board feels better than the coiler board because it has poison, but then and there's no iron again. Oh, right, just I'll, ruthless. I'll, right, also, I'll reveal it for you. This one got fourth. Yo, what's yeah. your thoughts on I'm that? So close. I said fifth or fourth, so fifth I win. Fifth. I, I will give it to you. Fifth or fourth, I, th I think that's very reasonable. So, yes, this one it does look stronger than the opponents, but apparently, um, you know, going up against Tonk Comp, right, didn't really work out. And uh, he did mention it was funny that the other one did better placement, though. You can see that if the opponents are able to, you know, create a, a, you know, get there right before they can... Like in the other one, he was able to kill him before they scaled. This one obviously was not <laughs> able to kill them before they scaled. And even though he has the poisons, <laughs> right, um, up against a I ton of like one. divine shield minions, right, not against, uh, wasn't able to have that good setup. Oh, I mean, the cleave going second, that one, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if that one made like a big impact if he changed that up, but um it's it's not like the biggest cleave but it it was able to do the job deal with taunts but it apparently wasn't enough against the opponent that he faced and uh i just thought it was a fun game just to see how you guys would react it was a fun game i like it I, I do think i i you know maybe swapping like, them would be more of a debate it. or something like that start with this one be like this one's fourth and here but but i think that would be too obvious right if we swapped it up right you'd be like ah oh, sure. that one <laughs> That one, that one lost. This one had to win, you know. I, I think uh, a cool variation as well is you have two boards and you say which one placed higher. higher. I think yeah. that's, that's that's interesting too. Because yeah. I feel like this one is still a little bit. You're shooting in the dark, and there's so much extra information. Who did they play the last round and stuff? And yeah, it's kind of hard. You should get the MMR too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, Why like, not? I, I think that's all fair. I, so I, I think. I think the over under thing, right? It was like, oh yeah, this is probably over you know, under. Better. That's interesting too. Right? Is it over two or, or over two? Yeah, you can also do that for sure. Like I, either or both or either work. Uh, I think just like making it a bit easier because it feels like make the it, one to eight. Make it easier. So I'm hearing make it harder. All right. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, sure. I guess I mean just like giving a one to eight prediction like feels a bit more difficult when there's so many unknowns. Okay. Uh, okay but it's just saying which board placed higher or was it over under fourth, right? So I think that could be easier. All right. Enough. I'll keep that in mind, you know, for uh, next time. But, you know, seems seemed, seemed fun. At least yeah. to me, I, I like listening to you guys Audition. complain. <laughs> but there's not enough information, mm -hmm. I, I Why more. is this cleave? Why is this cleave second? This is insulting. <laughs> <laughs> what board are you showing? <laughs> oh, man. Fair enough. All right. Um, Our next and uh, last topic, I believe, is dealing with bad luck. I know. Nicolina, <laughs> you have a problem. I'm salty today. I'm sorry for being so salty, but I just had <sighs> bad things happen. Uh, I, I, I think we all like go through stretches where you know things don't go well, especially in this game. I think this game kind of like loves or relishes the dealing, giving people bad luck. You know, just like here's a one percent loss. Here's here is the six jumps you never asked for. Here is here's are here are rules that you will never use any of the cards. Did you level? I love saying that. Did I level here? Why are why am I getting one drop oh, yeah. when I'm oh, tier yeah, three? Yeah. You know oh, oh my god, that's the worst thing. Man. That's all the time. <laughs> so, you know. like, what I went to five today and two shops in a row. I saw ones and twos only. Mm -hmm. I was pissed. I, was I know that life. I know that life yeah. really well. So, uh, any any tips you like do that. to deal with it, or mm -hmm. you know, we're not all perfect people. You know, sometimes we don't deal with it well. You know, sometimes we're like, ah. Uh, personally, for me, I if if I'm having like a bad batch string, you know, sometimes I'll just end the stream. Sometimes I'll you know turn camera off. I don't know why that is. It's less pressure, I guess. So uh you know it just allows me to like relax and just like you know play without like caring too much about 
you know the uh what goes on there uh but i i think this game does have situations that put or unlucky moments right i think every player that's played can think in their head oh yes this was unlucky this was unlucky this was unlucky right it's just something that happens in the game right um trying to calm yourself down in, in whatever way right sometimes it's not perfect right it doesn't work but uh, you do have to realize that every player is going through that right you're not gonna have um you're gonna have those games or those days where that things go really well but you're also gonna have those days where things go really bad right and, and sometimes just being able to be like okay so this day felt bad but i still climbed or oh uh, this day felt bad and it, it was <laughs> It was bad, you know, but it's not, you know, this is, this is an outlier in my week or something like that. Right. So, um, you know, just being able to get past those moments and then move on. It, it, it does help a lot if you are able to, uh, keep that focus there. Um, sure. I remember, you want to yeah. yeah, sure. It's funny cause, um, Igor has been playing, um, like standard and wild and just like the other modes right mm -hmm. and he was raging earlier and he was like oh my god you know they top deck lethal or like uh, this better not be oh my yog or like you know he's just like freaking out about it or, like it's like every time they get something it's created by it's the perfect thing they need <laughs> and um raging and i get, i said to him that i should say to myself as well but he has way more severe anger than i do <laughs> but um mine turns to like laughter pretty quickly because i look at it as being absurd and he looks at it as being upsetting <laughs> but i was like you have to think about the game as a test to you like this game is just a test and the test is are you mentally stronger than the game or can the game break you <laughs> it broke me chat it broke me. does the game win against you like yeah. and if the game breaks you it wins and you know if you don't get upset by it yeah it's like a test of your mental fortitude and if you want to prove yourself like um mental gymnast then you uh you can keep your emotions under control why does it test me day in and day out? It never gives me a break. I ask just one day, can you not test me? But no, it yeah. laughs in my face nope. and says, today is another day for mental destruction. And I just wallow in my shit. And you just got to look back and just be like, bring it. Bring it. I have brought it for days. <laughs> I'm done bringing it. <laughs> I'm done. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I, I I think that's definitely a good way of looking at it, you know. Just seeing if it breaks you. Because <laughs> you can't be like, oh, it's gonna be fair next time. It's not gonna be fair. It's never gonna be fair. You can't wait for it to be fair. True, true, true. But you shitty. I I mean I'm a got to get like not too philosophical, right? But I do like stoicism, right? So that um just the philosophy that events are neutral right and it's your interpretation right they're like very very surface level right we're not going to go too deep into it so what gets me is uh the confidence right when my confidence goes down when it's bad luck and I also start thinking "Ooh, am i playing badly am i doing it wrong right and and that's because i can handle bad luck if i feel like i'm playing well i can do that for a long time but the problem is that you can only take so many losses before you start thinking, OK, there's got to be something I'm doing wrong. And that's that's what gets me. That's what puts me in a bit of an off mood, because um, then I don't know if I should keep queuing. Then I get a little bit like disheartened. And that's that's when I just, you know, like, let's say I end the stream. I might uh, just sit down and ask myself, OK, am I doing the right things? Let's look at those games. Was it really bullshit? And I think that as a streamer or just anyone that records their games, that's such a good tool because, yeah, it might be painful to go back and watch those losses, but at least then I'll know, right? I get to look at it with a fresh eye and say, yeah, okay, this was bullshit. But sometimes you'll also say, yeah, but I put myself in a position where I was able to get bullshit, right? Where if I didn't make this tiny mistake. But then I, what if it's not that yeah. way? What if it is just bullshit? If it's just bullshit, then I'll just be like, all right, well, statistically, I'm as likely as the next guy to get lucky and I'll just come back tomorrow. And yeah, that, that sucks what? in the moment. Then what do you do if like you think that, okay, like, yeah, next time I'll get lucky. But then the next game, 
you look back and you say, it's just bullshit. Sure. And then sure. you think, next time I'll get lucky. And then you're like, so if that again. happens, uh, if that happens, and to then like, you're like, bro. am I cursed? Do no, I, 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 I do know. get that. I do get that. I'm, I guess <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit more devil's advocate in that manner where I will then think, okay, well, this is a bit too many in a row. I'll start watching other people, right? Let, let's, you know, let's just like make it into a scenario where this happens, right? Sometimes it's just, it's a dip and it keeps dipping, right? It's like, it doesn't go up again <laughs> and you're just like, okay, yeah, it can't all be bad luck, right? And obviously it's possible, right? It could be all bad luck, but I think a lot of the time it's small things, right? And, and sometimes, honestly, you just have such a bad session that you come back and you come back and you have this honest mindset and you're like, all right, we're going to give it a, you know, like fresh day, fresh start. And you get like two awful games as your first games. And it just puts you in that mental state, right? Where you're like, oh, not again. Right? And you start just <laughs> identifying all the bad luck and it's like everywhere. And it's, uh, you start focusing on it like crazy. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and you just get this, um, this tunnel vision and you start missing these small opportunities where you could have made a difference just because you got so caught up in those two games where you legitimately got really unlucky. And now it just feels like you're getting unlucky the entire day afterwards because you're a bit tilted and you're making, you know, not like huge mistakes, but small things that could have bigger consequences in the game where we're talking a position where you could have been the 100 percenter but it turned into an 80-20 and you lost the 80-20 and you sit there be like, see, I am getting a lucky. I lost an 80-20, but in reality, it's a small thing you could have done earlier, which would have turned it into a hundred percenter. And it's, it's those things where if you really stuck in that rut um, and you do have the ability to separate yourself for that for a moment, sometimes you don't, right? You just got to take a break, got to take a walk and just put the game down for a few days. Um, but if you do still have that ability to separate yourself from the game and just say, okay, let's just, watch some streamers, let's see what they do. And and the honest, I think the most honest way to do that is you watch a VOD and instead of just saying, I would have done that, you're like, okay, what would I do here? And then you watch them play yeah. out the turn and you're like, damn it, that's not what I would have done. And they made the better play. Okay, I need to work on myself. Or uh, even if they made the worst play, you can be like, well, mine would have worked out better because... Sure, nice. yeah, yeah, Sometimes. for sure. Sometimes. But the best part is when you watch them like just rip a hook tusk after a hook tusk, and you're like, oh, I can play like that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still think too. Okay, but I think that is very, very pure. Shady Bunny, you're so pure. I mean, not always. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I'm human, right? I'll sit there and be like, God damn it, why does it have to be the worst hit every time? It, I um, think that my um my philosophy is just so much more jaded than that. <laughs> um i think that well of course i think of course i know i don't play perfectly like of course and nobody can play perfectly and i definitely i don't rewatch my games because why relive bad moments i think that just makes me more mad and it's some like time i could be spending doing something else instead of you know reliving something that already happened but um i, I definitely think that it can have value but also it can just be results oriented i mean you don't know what you're gonna roll into after you know and you could say then yeah i could have made this choice and whatnot but there's no way to know if you would would or should accident or like actually change your choice um you can sometimes make the correct choice and have the the wrong outcome especially in battlegrounds like even it, and like so sometimes think it's just too many variables to really really say definitively by watching back what you should have done um unless it's more of a clear mistake maybe but i also think that players are sometimes too hard on themselves and the game is random and it's just random and you just have to accept it and that's just face value it's random and Tell you can't like control it that much we want to control it so bad <laughs> we want to control mm. it really badly but we just can't and i also think that hearthstone has a strong tendency to be streaky and it's just how it is it's been that way ever since i've played it in standard and even in battlegrounds too you can gain a thousand ranks in a day i feel like it's harder to get ranks now but you could gain a thousand ranks in a day you can lose a thousand ranks you know in a how day. To lose a thousand you can gain no day. ranks in a day <laughs> like it's because of you know certain the way the game's built and for sure there's not much you can do about that so I think that helps me let it go, though, because I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a lot of the time it's out of my hands. But 
certainly I do try my best to um, control what I can control. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about negative mumbo jumbo. What about good luck? You know, how do you deal <laughs> with good luck? You know, some people don't know how to do it. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm getting everything I want. What do I do here? You know, I, I, I think there are definitely I, some uh, moments where you hit everything and then like that doesn't mean you win, right? Because you're like, you're not expecting to hit the nuts, right? And since you're not expecting to hit the nuts, you're not ready to capitalize on it. And then you're like, oh, well, I got everything I wanted. And I still got like third. And you're just like, ah, you know, actually, like, I, I don't know if that like turned into bad luck <laughs> like, in your head where it's like, I hit everything I wanted. And it still wasn't enough. This guy somehow had a crazier void than me. You know, I've had that those moments where I'm like, I got, I got everything was perfect, and I still didn't win. You know that kind of thing. But uh, definitely, you know, in terms of good luck, when you're having like a good string of games, right? Those, I definitely like to capitalize on that, right? Sometimes I like playing until I lose, right? If I'm having like a really yeah, me good, too. Yeah, really good session. I'm like, I just keep going until we lose. Because mm -hmm, it yeah. feels bad when you have the luck. You can't, yeah. Yeah. like... But also, that's... I'm a bit jaded. That's why the game is streaky. When you are on a loss streak, you don't want to stop because you're like, oh my god, I can just win one and then I'll be happy if I um, go off on a... I can't go off on a loss, so I have to I, keep playing. I and guess... then everything about a game is designed to keep you in it, keep you playing. Like you play more games, so that's why um, the streakiness benefits um, Hearthstone. It's like more time in the app because it's got the carrot and the stick, and you don't you don't want to end on a loss, and you don't want to stop playing if you're winning. Uh, I, it works both ways. Personally, it's I do not well have designed. that problem at all. Um, yeah, I feel like Collins and I are very prone to just be like, "All right, a bad game," and I feel like I played poorly. All right, I'll see, yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Look at the mindset of you know that, the, maybe not just specifically you guys. Yeah, for you guys, sure, you no, no. Very... We're, we're, yeah, we're saying just. I, I guess it's just we don't want the MMR to go down any further, right? For like the stupid yeah. mistake we made or whatever, we're just like, right, I'll come back tomorrow. So, but yeah, I, I think, think in general, of the design yeah. it's supposed to be that way. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know games are built, you know, to keep you playing, right? That's no secret. Mm -hmm. It's not satisfying to lose a game of Battlegrounds because you feel like you got robbed. And when you win, you love it. You're like riding the high and you want it to keep continue. You want to high roll again. It's like pulling a slot machine and you get sevens. So you're like, yes, keep I'm amazing. You know, I've got the luck. I've got this my good day today. I got to keep going like you guys just said. And if you lose, you're like, well, I got to get my money back. <laughs> <laughs> got to get my MMR slot machine back. Exactly. Principle. Yeah. That's true. Um, definitely a lot of games have that tendency to... Want yeah, you not to just keep hard. playing, yeah. So, you know, and there's different ways to do it. That's for sure. But yeah, I guess that's why I'm like, just you're very pure. I'm more cynical. Yeah, that's. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think, and there's a lot of pureness in <laughs> in some of your comments. You know, you just like to have that <laughs> side of the other side, just so you have the honest approach of looking at things. And I think that's very fair, uh, for sure. But then um, I think that's any other like final thoughts or topics about any any of the things we've talked about today. Anything you want to reiterate and mention or anything like that? Um, well, on the topic of dealing with the good luck, I, I do agree with the keep playing while the streak is hot. But I guess I have a more just built in sort of check where I'm like, ooh, I got away with a lot of stuff I did wrong this game. Right? I got lucky, but I can also identify yeah, I'm getting tired because I think that's usually the the problem where you're like, oh, I'm on a streak, but I'm getting tired. And I know that one of these games I'm going to mess up bad enough that it's I'm not going to get away with yeah. it anymore. Then and, I quit as soon as I make yeah, it. Right. Play. You just feel, <laughs> but the, the art is to stop one game before that happens, right? So yeah, I don't have that. I don't like, do that either. Yeah, sometimes I don't do it either, right? But then I feel like, oh, this was so one. true, though. This was the one too many, like, right? Yeah. be sitting there like nodding off and then you just like um Shouldn't. don't get a minute on board and you're like okay i gotta i gotta go yeah done. we're done here like yeah. the non-hero power you're a taunted golden <laughs> switch king you're like all right yep that's it we're down here yeah. uh, no i mean oh i mean just so also really enjoy it right like i think that's you know like uh very hearthstone you know we talked about like it's streaky but there's very high highs there's very low lows so 
just enjoy it. I think when things are going your way, just, you know, I think some people might feel like they're not really entitled to the win then. I say, screw that, right? Mm-hmm. You, you get bad enough games, just enjoy it. That that game is yours, right? That's it's fair. just for fun in the end, so. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, that's been good. You know, been quite always, the session, yeah. Yeah. I'm always I'm so tired. Yeah. I can't I'm believe always I'm worried um personally about how short or how long these are gonna be. You know? And I think uh they're you know, they're getting quite long. <laughs> you know, I think it's my fault. <laughs> no, no, Every no. podcast I'm on, it just the it ends with like, Oh my god, that was so long. I think I just talked too much. Yeah. This this is That's one of I've our learned. shorter podcasts in in, in oh, recent really? movie. Yeah, it's, it's no <laughs> good. Okay, because I've been feeling that trend. Like, do I talk too much on podcasts? No, it's great. Um, I love it. I, you know, I love we're having, streamers. We talk for a living. Yeah, right? I mean, you cool. got to get used to it, right? Like, and and I love having people that have opinions and want to talk about you know their experiences. You know, sometimes, um, you know, people won't talk or unless you know. They know exactly what they're talking about, or you know, they don't want to interject or anything like that. And you, you were great at that, so I, I perfectly like it. Very strong anti cleave opinions as well. So oh yeah, it's, that it's, okay. It's, so that that one, you know, not a, not a, <laughs> I love cleave. You know, maybe <laughs> you know, maybe not the anti cleave, but everything else is perfect. They uh, for sure. But uh, that will be our show for today. Thank you guys for joining and participating. Thank you uh nicolina for joining us here i hope you enjoyed it i did it was fun always fun talking to you guys thanks for having me i'd be cast one of my tournaments yeah for sure just let me know and i will uh i will join that pick a date pick Pick a a date uh sure okay we'll get we'll get we'll get the details uh sorted out but thank you guys for all the feedback the improvement thank you guys for the comments um if you guys want to send us all um any 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 likes any messages any improvements and stuff you can send it at hsbgpodcast at gmail.com and you can reach me at educated collins underscore collins you can reach shady bunny at shady bunny at twitch and where can we reach you nicolina uh twitch.tv slash nicolina <laughs> okay any twitter or anything <laughs> else you want to shout out my twitter is nicolina moon or moon, underscore okay. moon or something like that okay. i don't really know <laughs> Sounds good. And um search for Nicolina, you'll probably find me. If I'm on that thing, I'll be Yeah, just Nicolina. Google Nicolina and you'll find everything pretty much. Yeah. But uh Yeah. Thank you guys for joining oh, us. Nicolina.com, I have a website. Okay. <laughs> okay. As well. If, that's probably yeah. the best way, isn't it, right? Like because you, it's you okay. have everything I don't update it very much. Oh, okay. Yeah, well. I think so. I think I do, but yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, That's it for us, our show today. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week, pretty much. Bye-bye. Bye. See you guys.